Yarangan Janaburu Rubibi. They come from Broome. Rayungilo Al Jagun. My name is Jagun. I want to work with all of you in building an Australian nation that is characterised, as I said in the in the Aru, Marble Narangal, a strong community. Marble Buru, a strong place, a good country. Pat Dodson's CV speaks for itself. It's about Australians finally getting to enjoy the richness that's within Indigenous culture. You'd gladly follow him into battle, and I have. Yet he's made his life's work to make peace. National debates about Indigenous affairs issues have shifted over the past three or four decades. Patrick Dodson has been there through all of them. I leave here at a time when, in my view, the nation is at a crossroads on how to proceed on issues that affect the Aboriginal and Australian First Peoples. Pat Dodson was one of those young men of promise who ended up promising his life to a very particular purpose. We think of the struggle that makes us the people that we are, a struggle that has kept us together, has made us strong. Fellow Senator Mullandiri McCarthy has known Patrick Dodson all her life. I think I was probably about six or seven years of age. I just remember um, all of us kids just loved him. You know, we'd see him walk around and we'd run after him and, Father Pat, Father Pat. With the Northern Territory Land Rights Act enacted in the late 1970s, and I was privileged to attend a number of meetings on country with him, I remember being very impressed that here was this man addressing all the traditional owners and there was a little four-year-old boy of his clinging to his leg and he was able to just carry on regardless and I thought that spoke bundles about his integrity. It's really uh, a thing that the whitefellas or the non-Aboriginal people of this country have to find a way to come to terms with our existence here. He was terribly disappointed with the Barunga Statement and the treaty where they danced. He danced. Uh, as one of the men that welcomed the dancers of the time with, with Bob Hawke. From Northern Territory land rights, Dodson would go on to play a central role as a commissioner on the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody in the 1980s. It's a very difficult area to, uh, to be involved in. The Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody, even today, is a um, critical piece of work. Uh, that the country still has not uh, fully resolved to address, unfortunately, but um, and is sadly as relevant now as it was when that work has taken place. He pioneered that leadership in a way that hadn't happened in this country before. Pioneered that leadership for First Nations people to see that uh, we can be in positions of authority, like working on a Royal Commission, and still share the pain and grief of our own families who give evidence. By the 1990s, the battle had moved to native title. The Howard government's move to offset the impact of the High Court's WIC decision on native title led Dodson to quit as chair of the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation. But it was the central question of reconciliation with which Dodson came to be best known. Indeed, he came to be known as the father of reconciliation. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I can do this without crying. Um, as you can see, there is great love for Patrick and he has been part of all of our lives, part of the life of this um, parliament, but importantly, part of the life of this nation. While many Australians may now only see reconciliation through the lens of this year's referendum, the debate about how to achieve it has taken many twists and turns, with Patrick Dodson there for every one of them, from the Council of Reconciliation in the 1990s to an expert panel on constitutional change in 2012, to a parliamentary committee in 2018, and to this year's referendum. Cruelly, after such a long involvement, the cancer that has threatened Dodson's life has also robbed him of the chance to lead the debate this year as he might have wished. So I quote Senator Dodson, 
This alteration is profound because it is facing up to Australia's legacy of colonisation and assimilation. It is in response to the generation, generous invitation of First Peoples in the Uluru Statement from the Heart. One of the things about losing the referendum that is sad is that, you know, in many ways, Patrick is um, a symbol of so many other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who will, you know, long remember this loss and the country's um, decision not to, to recognise people through a voice to parliament. This is an exercise I leave to the next generation. Both Indigenous and non-Indigenous youth of this country to pursue. Those with vision, those with ambition, those with hope, those who love this nation. He also had an important message, you know, for all of us, uh, that this was the time to have courage, not capitulation. I say kalia to you, and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you.